and welcome back to another of our reminiscence films. As we said before, sadly we can't come and see you in the home at the moment, so we're coming to you by the power of film instead. Um, my name's Alex um, and I work for East Riding Libraries, so hello to any of you that have watched our films before. You may have seen one with my colleague Sophie. Now, today we're going to talk about weather and the extremes of weather. So I just need to go and get changed. So we're just going to pause for a moment and I will be back in just a moment. Back. Right now, can you guess which season we're going to start with? Yes, of course you can. It's winter. So I'm all dressed for it. I've got my bobble hat on. And I've got my scarf and I've got my mittens on strings. Do you remember that? They went through your coat so you couldn't lose them. If they didn't do it, if you didn't have it as a child, you probably have done it for your children. So, and I'll just pop those down. And I've got my big coat on. Was that what it was called in your house? It was in ours. I, whenever the weather was bad, my mum would look out and say, you need your big coats on. So I've got my big coat on with my big hood. I'm going to take it off because it's a bit warm. So I'll just pop that out of the way. So I've got my scarf on. Now, I've also got on my knitted woolly. Now, this is a hand-knitted jumper that my mum knitted for me. So do you remember having hand-knitted jumpers and hand-knitted bobble hats, hand-knitted scarves? The other thing that you might have had that was hand-knitted was socks. You probably won't be able to see these very well. Hang on, I've got a red pair on there better. My red socks, they're my welly socks because I've got my Wellington boot on the other foot because obviously you need those in winter for storms and things like that when it gets wet and muddy or for the snow so we're going to just have a, a little pause there and you can have a chat about the type of clothing that you wore in the winter what do you remember did you have galoshes um, did you have big waterproof jackets what sort of things did you wear when the weather was bad okay so we'll just have a little pause there Okay, well, we're going to carry on talking about winter and storms and things like that, so I've left my big jumper on. Okay, so, do any of you remember um, the winter of 1947, the big snow? Now, I've got some pictures here that might remind you, looking at these, you had a lot of snow. So, we've got some people there with a bus that's been snowed in. That snow is very deep. And then I've got some at the bottom there with some people stood next to some snow drifts. Now, do you remember that winter when we had all that snow? Um, do you remember sledging on tin trays down the hill? Or and do you, were you snowed in? Could you not get out of the house? Could you not go to school? Um, Oh, we've got some sound effects here. See whether you can guess. I'm sure you've got it. Yeah, that was somebody walking through snow or trudging through snow, as we tend to say. So, yeah, while well, the children were probably all out having fun sledging on their tin trays and making snowmen and having snowball fights. The adults were having to try and get to work and get food and things like that. So with all that snow, that would have been a real struggle. So let's have a think whether that's something that, that you remember. A few years later, in 1963, we had not the big snow, but we had the big freeze. <clears throat> so here we've got, um, I think that's probably a waterfall that's frozen on there. And at the bottom we've got a river with people cycling on the river that's frozen. 
So that's the big freeze. So do you remember the big freeze? Did the pipes freeze at home? Or did they freeze at school? I know even um, when I went to school in the 70s and early 80s, our school still had, our primary school still had outdoor toilets. And when it was really cold and the pipes froze, we couldn't go to school because there was no toilets because they were outside in the shed and they were all frozen up. So do you remember things freezing at home and maybe you couldn't go to school? Was there ice on the inside of the windows? And did the milk freeze? If you got milk from the milkman left on the doorstep in a bottle, did it freeze and shoot out at the top of the bottle? The other thing which sometimes people do and then regret it, did you lick something that was frozen? Did your tongue stick to it? Can't say that. Um, we sure had some pictures there about f with frozen ponds and rivers. Even that year, I think the sea actually froze as well. So do you remember that? Do you remember any local ponds or anything freezing? Do you remember going skating on those ponds or just playing on the ice on the ponds? In London, in a long time ago, in 1684, the Thames actually froze for two months. And they had what they called frost fairs on the Thames as it was frozen. So they had stalls and things like that or actually on the river. So during these events, did the weather, if you were going to school, did the weather affect how you got to school? Would you have normally gone on a bus and did you have to walk? Would you have gone on a bike and did you have to walk? And once you got to school or once you got home, was there a special way that you used to thaw out? Did, um, did mum give you something special? Did she give you soup or did she give you a hot broth? Or um, was there something particular that you ate or drank to thaw out when you came back in from being really cold? We'll have a pause now. So if you want to have a chat about if you remember either of those events or if you don't remember those events, if you just remember when it snowed or, or when things froze at home, if you want to have a chat about those and we'll be back shortly. Hello, we're back. Right, I hope you've had a, managed to have a good chat about those two, um, those two winters. Now we're going to talk about some individual storms that you might remember. Um, there was a big storm in 1953, which they called the storm of the century. It actually killed 300 plus people. Um, there was coastal flooding. There was gale force winds. And because the gale force winds coincided with a high tide there was a tidal surge so there was lots of coastal flooding so I've got some pictures here but I don't know whether any of you remember that storm and remember there being any damage or remember either lived on the coast or saw the news so this is one this is a picture from the coast of people being rescued in boats from um, a coastal place that was flooded and then I have another one here which shows how high the levels of the water got. And there's some people there being rescued from the second floor. And probably to climb out of the bedroom window and come down a plank. And there's a man helping them to get them out of the houses that are flooded. So is that something that you remember? Have you ever had a house that's flooded? Um, <clears throat> there was also... Um, a storm in 1987. Now this is one that I remember and it's quite famous because Michael Fish, the weatherman, a lady had heard on the news that they were warning about a hurricane in France. So she rang the weather centre and said, are we going to have a hurricane? And Michael Fish actually went on the the weather on the on the national news and said oh mrs so and so that rang in you don't need to worry we're not going to have a hurricane well unfortunately the southeast was hit by hurricane force winds and was that somewhere that you lived do you remember that we actually lost in that storm we actually lost 15 million trees and we had 18 people killed so i've got some pictures here of sort of the damage that was left after the storm of these trees. So there's one there of a car that is probably written off by a tree. And then there's another aerial shot here of a street that lost a lot of trees. 
I know Kew Gardens lost an awful lot of their sort of specimen trees in that storm. So that was quite major. And it also obviously damaged a lot of people's houses and things as well. <clears throat> Something else that you might remember um, from the 50s, if you lived in a city or somewhere that had heavy industry, was something called smog. And that was when um, particular weather conditions occurred and none of the the smoke and the stuff from the smoke from chimneys and the smoke from heavy industry could actually rise and go away it was held down so we had what we called smog it was really bad um, in London in 1953 and if you can see like we're having to do today there's a policeman and he's wearing a mask and you can see in the background you can't really clearly see any of the vehicles because it is they're hidden by the smog. So do, so do any of you remember smog? Okay, there was another storm in 1990. That one arrived during the day. It was, it was quite a bad storm, that one. Um, because it arrived during the day, it actually killed 47 people. You see, we're having a bit of a storm here. It's not doing my hair any good and yeah, so all the leaves came off the trees. There was cars that were blown off the road. Roofs collapsed. There was lots of rain. I'm sure we probably, there was bridges that collapsed. I'm sure that there was probably some thunder. And some lightning. Now, do you remember lightning? When we had lightning, we had to charge around the house and unplug all the tellies and unplug electrical items in case there was a surge and it damaged the electrics. I think we might have some thunder. Oh, maybe not. We don't have any thunder. But I'm sure you remember what thunder sounds like. Did you have special stories that you used to tell your children um, so that they weren't scared by thunder and lightning? We used to, we used to, it was the man who lived in the clouds and uh, oop, that was his chairs falling over and that was oop, his bed falling down the stairs and we've got some rain. Oop. There's some thunder. There we go. Was that was storm something that frightened you? Do you remember being frightened as a child? Um, I was okay if I was in the house, but I wouldn't want to be caught out in one. Okay, so we will just have a, a pause there so that you can have a chat about any of those major storms that you remember. Or if you remember smog, if you lived somewhere that was industrial. Okay, so we'll just have a little pause. Welcome back. I'm sure you can guess we've changed seasons. We're now going to summer. So I've got my sun hat on to keep the sun off my head and I've got my sunglasses on to protect my eyes. I'm going to take them off though because I can't see anything with them on. And I've got my sandals on. Now these, you probably can't see them. I'll take one off. These are a modern version. I'm sure you all remember Jesus sandals, what we used to call them, with the bar across the front and the bar across the top. Do you remember having Jesus sandals? Okay. So, can you remember, yeah, what type of clothes did you wear? Did you wear dresses? Were you allowed to wear strappy tops or was that not the done thing? Um, were you allowed to wear shorts? So what type of clothes were you allowed to wear in the summer? Also, did you have to put sun cream on? I was really surprised. I didn't think sun cream had been around as long as it has, but turns out about 1938 it became commercially available. So did you have to use sun cream? Probably, maybe didn't, we didn't really understand how dangerous the sun was um, until fairly recently. So you maybe didn't wear it as much as a child, but I bet when your children were small, you were, slip slap slopping 
some cream all over them. The other thing that with a, an English summer, British summer, you need your Mac. Your Packer Mac. You can't go anywhere without your Mac because you might just get that summer shower. So, oh, now I remember having a cagoule. Now, what I think of as a cagoule as one of those that went over your head that had a big like pocket at the front made you a bit like a kangaroo and it had a just a little zip there but this one's just a an ordinary mac oh i'm knocking my hat off look oh, it's all going it's all going wrong look so yes so me pack a mac on so there are all these clothes that we have to have just to be prepared for a british summer because you never quite know what it's going to do do you now there was a particular summer that I'm sure some of you remember where I think you would have been really really pleased to have had to put a Mac on you would have been pleased for some rain and that was the summer of 1976 now during the summer of 1976 this would have been very familiar to a lot of you because this would have been what you would have had to go and collect your water it wouldn't it I'm sure some of you remember that going to the standpipes with your bucket. I've got some photos here. There you go. There's some, some gentlemen with a load of standpipes that they're about to go and put in. And I've got one here of a lot of ladies queuing up with their buckets, look, to fill their buckets up from the standpipe in the street. So, do you remember, was that one of your jobs? Did you have to go and collect water in a bucket from the standpipe in the street um, because it was so warm a lot of the reservoirs dried up and there's a there's a picture there that's Putsford reservoir can you see how cracked it is and all the water's just disappeared now one of one of the ladies that I work with Shirley she remembers she lived in London at that point um, near the Welsh Harp reservoir and she remembers that that dried up almost completely and they actually found some bodies that had obviously been dumped in the reservoir so you see all sorts of things appear more pleasantly um, quite often when the reservoirs dry up you see the villages and the buildings that were flooded um, to build the reservoir so all sorts of things appear once those reservoirs start to dry up um, not such a good thing though because if they're drying up then we are going to be a bit short of water um do you remember during that summer being encouraged to bath with a friend or to use the um, the water from your washing up to water your garden we've got some notices here some posters that might look familiar to tell you that you're entering a drought area and instructing you to save water so that was where your bath with a friend came in. Okay, and there's another one here, probably from the Peak District National Park, where you were you were banned from going onto the moors because everywhere was so dry that if there was a spark, it would have started a, a moorland fire. You see, during that period, all the grass would be brown and dry. So yes, yeah, so fires would, would have been a, a real risk. The other thing that happened during that summer, so I'm told, is that there were invasions of insects. I think that particular one, it was ladybirds. So do you remember the invasion of the ladybirds? Um, I'm assuming that everything was just absolutely covered. If you hung your washing out, they got covered in ladybirds. Um, or since then, I remember there being um, invasions of thunderbugs and things like that, the little black creatures. Um, and I've just got a picture here of people trying to cool down that summer. There you go, they've got their feet in um, what I presume is a fountain or something somewhere. Okay. Now also, um, coming a bit more recent times, in 2003, we had a really, really hot day. And at that point, it was the hottest day in history. Um, the tarmac melted and um, you would have to be have on plenty of your sunscreen. Otherwise, you might have got sunburned. Do you remember ever, have a, ever having sunburn? 
really painful it's not nice or even sunstroke which is even worse because that makes you all headachey and makes you feel sick um do you remember going swimming in places that you maybe weren't supposed to go swimming in rivers or in in maybe the pond or the local lake now we've got some sounds that may sound familiar to you sort of sounds of summer that we're just going to play I bet you recognise those. Um, the seagulls, uh, if you went for a day trip to the seaside during the summer, you would have heard the seagulls and those lovely ice cream chimes that every child loves to listen out for the ice cream chimes. So we're going to have another little pause. So if you want to have a chat with the, the people who are with you about what you remember about summers, um, particularly the drought in 1976 or just summers in general, what you wore, what you did during the summer. Okay, so we'll have a little pause. Hello, welcome back. I hope you've all shared your um, stories and your memories about summer. What we're going to talk about now um, is just those really freak weather occurrences. So we've just got a couple. Um, the first one um, we're going to talk about is 1979 and the, the fat, fast net yacht race. Gosh, that's quite difficult to say. Um, and a storm just blew up out of nowhere um, as they were racing from um, Plymouth to they go to the Scilly Isles and then come back again. Now, here's a picture of um, Royal Naval Rescue Helicopter out with one yacht. But there was, it actually blew for 20 hours, did this storm, at about 4th 10. And there was actually 2,500 people um, were out on boats that day. So it must have been absolutely terrifying. And it just blew from nowhere. None of the forecasters or anything saw it coming. It just arrived from nowhere. Another one that you may remember, it's a bit more recent, is the, the flooding at the village of Boscastle when we just had a freak rain deluge and the water flooded down the river that ran through the middle of the village um, and it just flooded all the houses on the side of the river. It actually washed 150 cars into the harbour and out to sea. Um, obviously, loads and loads of damage. Um, people had to be rescued by, again, the heli rescue helicopters from the roofs of buildings and things like that. So there were actually 100 people rescued by helicopter. So it was a miracle that, that nobody died, but we were very, very lucky and, and nobody did. Um, the other thing that we're starting to get sometimes now is tornadoes. Um, that They do a lot of damage over just a, a small area. Um, and in actual fact, the weatherman this morning was saying that um, there was a water spout created over the sea in, uh, I think it was Plymouth or Portsmouth, somewhere on the south coast. And if that had landed, if that had been on land, that would have been a tornado. But you could see the, the circular wind and at the bottom you could see all the water being pulled up. So yeah, tornadoes. Can you think of any other sort of freak weather events? Is there anything else that you particularly remember? maybe your house was damaged or something like that so we'll just have a pause so you can have a think about those freak weather events okay um just gonna round off now with some weather folklores so these things that um if something how to forecast the weather um without listening to the weatherman so we've got things like St Swithin's Day. If it rains on St Swithin's Day, it's going to rain for 40 days. That's never good. You never want 40 days of rain. Um, and what about counting between the thunder and the lightning? Or well, the lightning and the thunder it is. 
to tell how far away it is. So you watch for the lightning to go off and then you count one, two, three, four. And then when you get the thunder, that's how far away from you it is. We've got our pine cones. Now these are all lovely and open. So I think that means it's dry, it's going to be dry and they close up if it's going to be wet. And the other thing as well, seaweed. People hang up seaweed and um, if you see, if it's dry, it's warm. But if you've got rain that's about, that's going to come in, it goes soggy because it takes the moisture out of the air. So it goes, it goes damp. So it will tell you that rain is coming before it actually arrives. So can you think of any more? So that's us done for our film today on the weather. I hope it's brought back some memories, some maybe pleasant, some maybe not so pleasant, but I um, hope you've had a good chat about your rememberings about the weather and how it affected your day-to-day -day life. And if you can remember any more weather folklores or if you want to share any of your memories with us, we'd love to hear about them. And you can message us on Facebook at East Riding Libraries, Museums and Archives. So I'll say goodbye for now and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you for watching.